First Sunday in Trinity, June the 14th. Mary has just played that lovely tune to which we sing the words, Thy mercies how tender, how firm to the end, our maker, defender, redeemer and friend. Words of praise. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. We see Jesus in action. He tells us about God. And this is our reading for today from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, beginning at verse 35. Jesus travelled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues, and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. We talk about harvest fields, don't we? You in your small corner and I in mine. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. It sounds very much like us today. They were weary, they were all over the place. You can see a flock of sheep, can't you? Just wandering. I've walked the streets of Nazareth, I've looked into the faces of the people that Jesus would have looked, in, looked at, and yeah, harassed and helpless. But then I've also walked around our supermarkets here, and I've looked at the faces, harassed and helpless for sure. How confused is our generation? How confused when people try to read back 21st century attitudes into history and take down statues as acts of judgment, no regard for the historical context, no understanding. How confused is our generation when it tries to make moral decisions with no reference to that absolute benchmark of right and wrong, God himself? How confused is our generation robbed of the capacity to think for itself, bombarded with images, news headlines, minutiae, rules, distracted by busyness and entertainment, hooked on adrenaline? Doctor Who is at once mesmerised and frustrated by human beings. And who will judge our generation in the years to come? Other generations. Mary and I were talking about this topic and she said, very insightfully I thought, God must be looking at our earth and thinking crumbs what on earth are they doing? I agree with her. According to the, in the internet, the best recipe or treatment for confusion is drinking less alcohol, avoiding illegal drugs, eating good food, and getting enough sleep. Well, I know it's a different kind of confusion. However, there are a lot of parallels, aren't there, between that kind of confusion and inner confusion, spiritual confusion, moral confusion, intellectual confusion, all over the place. And no mention you'll notice in that list of listening to Jesus. When Jesus says... Uh, saw these crowds, and he had compassion on them. The crowd, word crowd actually does mean confused throng. It's not just a large football match. 
it is going here and there and like atoms all over the place. His response is one of compassion and not of judgment. I'm intrigued by that. Compassion is practical. It is to have pity. It is to have mercy. It is to feel distress with somebody. It's to seek to help them from motives of kindness and goodwill. When God saw the confusion in our world, he sent Jesus. And when Jesus saw the confusion in our world, he healed, he taught. He brought the good news of his kingdom. And as he looks at us and ours, I guess he feels the same. He showed his mercy, didn't he? In healing, in teaching, but also in dying and in rising again. So when Jesus saw the crowds, he didn't judge them. He looked at their heart. He had compassion for them. In this tangled web of a world in which we live, we all of us have a story, a story which drives us. Stories are never excuses for behaviour, but they are reasons. And the truth is that God looks on the heart, whereas we as human beings look at the outward appearance. The, mu the media fuels this approach, and there is no escaping from it. But it was always true of God to look on the heart. Remember David from the Old Testament? David, in a moment, was adulterous, and to cover his tracks, he committed murder. And yet, God called him a man after my own heart. Interesting. God doesn't have a murderous and unfaithful heart. Nobody saw that David had a faithful heart. David was truly repentant. He wrote Psalm 51. He wanted to go God's way. He recognised his mistakes. He didn't have that kind of heart. God saw it. Two thousand, uh, No, 1,000 years before David, Moses made some mistakes. He was a fairly weak leader at first, but gosh, didn't he become strong? But at one point, he, he was so frustrated with those people that he didn't give God glory for something, and that was a mistake. And yet... Moses is called by God his friend. He's a friend of God. Exodus 33, verse 11. And he used to meet with God in a tent as a man meets with his friend. And 500 years before Moses, there was Abraham. Well, Abraham wasn't faultless either. Not these heroes of the Bible. They're none of them whitewashed. And God attributed righteousness to Abraham on account of his faith. Such mercy, such grace, such ability to look on our heart. In every case, the motives, the direction, the repentance, the responsiveness to him and his word. That's what he looks for. So Jesus coming and showing such compassion is not surprising. Our world is not tidy. We are individuals. We are confused. Malvina Reynolds, singer-songwriter, wrote a protest song about the prefab houses that were being erected in many towns in the USA in the 60s, early 60s, post-war years. And modern life was developing in a sanitised fashion. All the houses were like little boxes and all the people were just the same. Well, it's not like that, which is why we quite rightly resist that attempt to tidy up our society and make us think and be the same. Society is chaotic and confused in a negative sense and we resist it rightly to be tidied up and robbed of our individuality. But at the same time, there is a confusion which Jesus wants to heal. Confusion based on having no anchor point Society is all over the place. Will we judge it? Or will we have compassion on it? 
because we perceive like Jesus. It's need. It's separated from God. What hope does it have? And do we go to it with the message of Jesus? I'm going to listen to a lovely song, sung by my favourite choir. You'll see my sister singing in it, third from the left, on the front row. And these are the words. In the doubt, in the fear, in the loneliness, in the struggle of right against wrong, somewhere amidst the confusion, there should be the church. That's not what the words say. Somewhere amidst the confusion, there will be hope. There will be love. There will be God. Following this song, you may like to pause the video for your own prayers and reflection. confusion there will be hope there will be love there will be God 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So our special prayer for today. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>